Good morning. So I've had a couple requests to find either an app or a website to convert a picture or a photograph um, or an image of any kind onto a grid in order to make um, a graph can. <laughs> Sorry about that. Words are hard this morning. Uh, so I did find a couple. I found one app that I thought worthy of mention and I found one website which is perfect in my opinion. So I'm going to open those up and uh, start from there. So the first one and I think that hands down this is the best um, for this particular purpose. It's called stitchboard.com. You do need to become a member. The good news is, is the membership is free. They have a lot of different um, choices on their website. And to be honest with you, I just discovered this website myself this morning and I discovered it only for this one purpose. I have not had a chance to really explore this website, but it looks really really fun and interesting. It looks like it has a lot to offer um, for all different kinds of crafts, but I'm just going to focus on developing patterns um, from pictures for graph scanning. So it does have a section here called patterns, and if you click on it and come down to create a pattern, it's going to take you to the free pattern wizard. So again, you are going to want to become a member in order to really access this, but as far as I can see, there's really no bad reason <laughs> to be, like there's, there's no reason not to become a member. I haven't found like that I've been spammed a lot or anything like that. Um, they just ask for your email address. So, you know, in the future, maybe I will get a bunch of spam emails, but other than that, I guess it's kind of worth it because this really is pretty cool how this works. So what you're going to do is choose a file. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick a file. All right, let's use her. She's kind of fun. All right, so I've chosen my image and here it shows it right here. This is my image. I'm going to choose crochet. I'm going to choose standard because I'm not going to be doing Tunisian crochet or fillet crochet. I'm just going to use standard. I'm a standard shape. Um, and here you can choose your own colors if you want or they will choose colors for you. Um, you can limit the number of colors. I'm going to choose to limit the number of colors to say 15 because if I was going to buy the yarn I don't think I'd want to buy more than that. Um, depending on how many colors you choose the more um, in depth it's going to be. So. I'm just going to stick with 15 though. I think that's plenty of colors to make that particular picture. Um, the stitch board basic palette for the color palette. There's all these different color palettes. I'm just going to stick with the basic palette. I did just want to mention how cool this is actually. I didn't really pay much attention to it until I was editing, but this does offer the different color palettes for different yarn types like there's Red Heart Super Saver and Karen Simply Soft. So that's really, really neat. Um, you can create the pattern with up to 150 stitches across. I'm just going to go with a standard count of 80. That seems to work fine for me. So you can get your pattern in a PDF, which is what I'm going to do. You can have it be symbols only. So you know, like the, you know, A, B, C, D for the colors. I'm just going to click on colors because I like to be able to see the colors. And I'm going to use my grid every five stitches. This is all personal preference and I'm just figuring this out. So I'm not an expert by any means on this. Um, you can do a word chart or a graph chart or both. So I'm going to click on both because I haven't done that yet. So let's just see what that looks like. And you can use the color name, letter, or number. I'm just going to go color name for the word chart symbol. And if you're left-handed, you can click here. I don't know if that helps or not, not being left-handed. but And the optional information will show at the top of your screen. So the pattern name, I'm just going to put test three because I've already done a couple test runs. 
And if you want to add your own copyright, you can, because you can actually, I think, publish maybe these patterns and sell them through this website. I'm not positive about that. Again, I haven't really gone too in depth with this particular website. I just wanted to show you this particular feature today. Um, this I thought was kind of cool. You can do the stray pixel cleanup. Um, so there's no um, pixels where it's like half and half, you know? where it's like half one color and half another color. So I'm going to set that to heavy because I want it to be very defined. And I think that's it. So let's see my pattern. I'm going to click there. And there's my pattern. And down here it's going to show me the colors and how many squares of each color and the names of each color. And then it, it, what it does is it breaks up your entire pattern in two quarters. Um, so, because it won't all fit. It won't all fit into one screen. So it's going to break that down. So when you print it out, you can like tape it together. So here's what it looks like when it's all put together. Oh, okay, so this is what it looks like with the written instructions, which is really, really nice, actually, because it can get tiring to count all of those little pixels. So that's kind of nice, too. So from there, if you want to, you can download it and save it in your downloads. And I'm just going to put in test three for my title. You can call it whatever you want and save it. So then it's saved. And that is free. That is all free. All you have to do is become a member of this particular website. So I'm really, really enjoying Stitchboard. I think this is perfect for what a lot of uh, people are looking for. All right, I'm going to take a little break and then we'll come back and I will show you another app, which is pretty good. Okay, so a second option to create a graph for a graph GAN from an image or a photo of your choosing is this uh, nice little app called Woltasia. So I have looked. Woltasia is available um, for i products, Apple products. Uh, it's also available in the Google Play Store, which is the version that I am using. And also it is available for Android. So um, sounds like it's available just about for any um, any smart device. So when you first open Woltasia, it does give you a little bit of a tutorial of how to use the, the app. It is pretty self-explanatory, so obviously I'm going to choose a new project. From there, I'm able to click on any of these uh, mediums, and I'm going to choose crocheting, but you could do it for knitting, painting, uh, embroidery, beading, um, all kinds of different things. So what, after I've clicked the crocheting, it gives me the option to do a default, which is just regular crocheting back and forth, Tunisian, which is, you know, working just one side, and corner to corner. So I'm going to choose corner to corner because that's the, the project that I'm currently working on is a corner to corner. So I'm going to go with that. From there, I need to select a photo. Now you will be um, asked to give permission to access your photos by the app. Obviously, they can't create a photo if they don't have access to your photos. So I gave permission and I am going to go ahead and choose my little chick for my logo here. Okay, so then it opens it up. So it gives you all of these different format options. Honestly, I haven't played around with with those at all. Um, it's just, yeah, I just I just want it on a grid. That's all I want. I just want the very basics. But it does have different options here. You can work with just a portion of the photo or crop the photo here, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. Uh, then I'm going to move up to sample. Now I'm pretty sure what they mean by that is kind of um, like your gauge. So I'm just going to go with their suggestions of the 12 and uh, 12. I'm just going to go with that. Uh, then you can come on and click on your colors. Now this top row here are their color suggestions. These are the colors that they recognize from your picture. 
but there are also all of these other options here. So you can choose on those as well. I'm going to go ahead and pick from their color suggestions because to me they look to be pretty accurate. So I'm going to click on all of those. Now if I wanted to limit my color usage, you know, maybe I didn't want to use all of them, I could, you know, uncheck some of them. But I'm just going to go ahead, for example's sake, and choose all of their colors. And then it also has this option for your filter. So you can play with that if you want to. But once you get all of those settings in place, you're going to come and click your check, your check mark up here. And that's going to show you what your pixelated version of your image looks like. So this is what they came up with and this is your color palette. So it's going to show you all of the different colors in uh, order of amounts that they've that they've picked for you. So obviously the green is the number one used color here. 80 percent of this image is green. Okay and then it works its way down. The next common color is gold and then it works its way down. So that way you would be able to choose probably how much yarn you're going to need. From there we are just going to click begin. And this is where it's, it becomes pretty cool. So you're going to click begin. You can choose whether you're left-handed or right-handed. Now if you're choosing left-handed, you're going to start from this side of the screen. But I'm right-handed so I'm going to choose this one and we're going to start working from this corner. So I'm just going to click apply. And then did you see how that broke it all the way down tiny, tiny, tiny? See if I make this really big, you can see what it's going to look like. But we are going to work all the way down here at our very first stitch. So what that does is it actually highlights the stitch you are on. And as you start your stitch, after you complete a row, you're going to click this checkbox. So you can go ahead and click the checkbox and it says, okay, now we're going to be working in this direction next. So now we are here and we are working our way in this direction. I'm going to click my check. So now I'm on row three. I'm going to be working upward in this direction, starting with this. And it's going to continue to do that as you work your way through. Um, so let's just say at this point you have been working for quite a while and now you need to take a break. Maybe you need to go fix dinner. Maybe you need to go to the grocery store. Whatever it is you need to do, you need to stop. So from there you're just going to click this arrow and it's going to save your project right here. So you can see that this project is 0.07% done. And when you want to come back to it, you just click on it again, click continue, and it's going to come right back to where you were and show you which direction you're working in and how to keep continuing your project. Now let's just say that you get to a certain point in your project and you realize, oh, I made a mistake back here. This stitch isn't correct. You can always click your back arrow and that's going to frog it on the screen for you. And it's always going to tell you which direction you're working in. So I really like the, the features of this, the easy um, saving. You don't have to click any save or anything like that. It's just done automatically and it always shows you which direction you're going in. So I really like that feature. And if you're comfortable working like this on a screen, that's perfect for you. You know, there's no pencil marks to, to try to erase if you've made a mistake. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you about this is um, let's just say you know you don't necessarily want to work on this project anymore and you're just kind of over it or it's just another you know something that you don't want to do you can erase it by clicking this little box here however <laughs> they understand how much work goes into this and they want to be very very sure that you definitely want to delete this project because maybe you're halfway through and can you imagine how traumatic it would be if you deleted it by accident. So they want to make sure that you know what you're doing. So what you literally have to do is you have to enter this code before you're allowed to do it. So if I enter 542, whoops, 
two, four, then I can delete it, but it will not let me delete it without entering that code. And now it is gone. So I think that that pretty much sums up the basics of uh, Voltasia as an app. I do think it's a really neat app if you wanted to use something digital rather than a paper copy. Um, so I, I hope you found that helpful too. So those are my um, favorite picks for how to create a grid from your own images and your own photographs to make them into a graph GAN. So uh, go on out there and uh, try them out and buy some yarn and get graphing.